Hello and what is up YouTube? It is I, your balding, bearded, and now bedazzled buddy, G3i, here today to talk about some currency, to talk about Faustus, to talk about the POE economy in the first week of the Calgary League. Now, what we're going to talk about here today, and the reason why I'm wearing such a silly bedazzled hat, is we're going to talk about currency, and we're going to talk about theory, and then we're going to talk about an application of that theory, and then we're going to see how it goes. So here's where we're at. So a bunch of y'all said you'd rather talk currency than build comparison. There will be future build comparison videos coming later on down the league. But what I wanted to talk about today was what we have all come to learn over the last week or so, which is a couple of things. One, as you're going to see on the list showing up somewhere here on the screen, is that gold is very important. Because if you want to talk to Faustus and you want to do currency exchange, you need to have gold, right? If you, if you don't have gold, you can't really do stuff in King's March and you can't hang out and uh, make currency exchanges with your buddy Faustus. We've also learned on the currency exchange that you can go in onto the currency exchange and do a whole bunch of different flips, okay? Uh, earlier, before the league launched, there were a few of you, not many of you, but there were some who were vocal, who said, hey, I'm super duper upset because an auction house means you can't just hide out warrior anymore. Okay, You still can hide out warrior. If you just want to hide out warrior, you can still go and flip using the trade website. That's totally possible for you to do. It costs you no gold. You can just chill on the trade website all you want. You can still do all of your regular arbitrage trading that you'd like to do. You can do the old tricks where you go and purchase up a whole bunch of scarabs, right? You just buy individual scarabs, you list them at a much higher price in bulk. Somebody else that's a big mapper comes along, or that's a trader for a big mapping group, comes along, buys all your scarabs, and boom, that just made all of those trades worth it. You can still do that if you'd like to. There's still better margins. There are better margins on profits doing things the old traditional way using just the website. But what you can do is you can do a mixture of the website and Faustus. So if you're actually playing and progressing a character, you can have the gold that's available to then make trades in the auction house go instant and you wouldn't have to wait for that big mapper or that big map grouping party to come and buy up all of the bulk trade that you wanted to do. You can also easier, it's, it, it is just easier now, to get involved into multiple different markets. With just a couple of clicks, you instantly list whatever it is that you want to list, whether it's Delve Junk, Essence Junk, Scarab Junk, Currency Junk, just anything, Div Cards, like you can just do anything, right? Anything except items, right? Anything that's stackable. You can just go and just sell. You can just put it up, instantly list it, instantly get it. Now, if there is a market that sometimes you'll hit, let's say I want to trade gem, gem cutters prisms for rogue markers, right? Apparently there is something of a market for that, right? There's, there's one person who's doing one to one, and then there's another who's doing one, uh, one GCP for, for 100. Anyway, you'll find a market that's not getting hit very often. Maybe it's not moving. You'll just leave it listed, blah, blah, blah. You won't have very much of a good time. But what you will find is that there are some common currencies like a gem cutter's prism, right? Because everybody's qualitying up their gems. And you might find that instead of trading rogue markers, right? You can put it up for chaos and all of a sudden you're going to see the market ratio is filled, right? There's a whole lot more people. On this list that you can see above my slightly bedazzled forehead, there are going to be a little, there's a little arrow. You see that at the bottom of the 170? There's a little tiny arrow, meaning that there's a whole bunch more people. You can see that there's a bunch of people with a lot of stock, and you can see that it's updating as you're looking at it, right? It just did that. Thank you so much, whoever just bought stuff for the sake of our video, just so that way you could see it live updates you about whatever it is or the competing prices that you're competing with. You can see somebody's got a, a price there of about 1.75 five sitting with 16,000 and it's just been uh, moving from there but that's probably the biggest buyer in the market and the biggest seller in the market. You can instantly go and compare those ratios once you just swap over right This is all just basic function UI stuff. As soon as you click whatever currency is on the left in the I want column you can click on it in the I have it and it'll automatically swap it for you and boom now you've got a market ratio that you can compare to all right you can compare what the prices are now in order to get into the the most nitty-gritty arbitrage trading that you can do and using the trade website and using Faustus as an auction house it would mean that you're going to want to look at hopefully a second or third screen that you've got your trade website pulled up 
you've got your market ratios pulled up, you've got your your ability to to grab a snipping tool pulled up. Wow, wow, that that did not work at all. Here we go. Let's try it again. You got your snipping tool pulled up, and you can use that on whatever ratio you're looking at, and you're like, boom, okay, here's a ratio. Now I'm going to flip the ratio so that way I don't make the mistake mentally calculating what was the ratio again. I think we're looking at gem, gem cutter prisms. And you flip it back over and then boom, you just compare, right? What was the ratio that we had on the one side versus what's the ratio that we've got now? We've got a ratio of one to two on the selling front and two to one on the buying front. There seems to be a little bit of wiggle room there. So if you wanted to accrue GCP, you could do that, right? Now, I'm not saying that you're gonna go out and make a bunch of currency doing GCP. What I did the other day uh, and shared this with a couple of guildies and with a couple of friends was simply traded chaos for exalts. Went out and just made that trade. It was a very good trade. Basically, the currency that we were bringing in per map for us allowed us to fill up a stock and every single map that we did, we were coming back out and the, the market was moving fast enough. This was last night plus the night before. The market was moving fast enough that every single time we came out of a map, Faustus was done. Sometimes Faustus would be done by the time we went into the map and we were generating so much currency. We started with like a flat amount of currency. I had like 170. Another buddy had like around 100. And then by the end of the night, he had more than a thousand chaos and I had more than a thousand chaos in terms of value. Then we started moving on into divs and, and away we went and we've been able to just dump currency into our characters from there. If you can figure out and if you can find a ratio on the current currency exchange market that's got a gap, people are willing to pay higher prices to have the currency that they want immediately. And that's something that we've never had access to before with just the trade website. And that's what's made this such a fun and exciting league to be a player both as a hideout warrior as well as as somebody that actually wants to go into maps and kill monsters. Because the gold, the way how gold works, if you want to actually interact just with the currency exchange, you need gold. In order to get that gold, you need to go kill monsters. And so that's now where we get into the conspiracy theory a little bit. So I'm now going to pull up a POE ninja of a bunch of ranger builds. All right. I've got a ranger build. I almost always, when I know I'm going to play a league for a long time, when I know the league is going to be good or I have a, a general sense that a league is going to be good, I typically make two characters over the first week okay one is going to be my standard necro that i know i'm confident about i know i can league start with if nothing drops for me i know how to upgrade it and i know i can push into the atlas and get things done the second character i then usually build is a pathfinder because oftentimes pathfinders are end game versions of builds or there's going to be something that is ranger oriented that's going to be an end game speedy mapper whether that's a raider rest in peace raider welcome new warden or if that is a uh, dead eye so by starting out with a second character as a Pathfinder, you open yourself up to all sorts of opportunities for speed mapping and for just for giga farming later on down the line. I oftentimes don't push that second character in the first week. I'm generally pushing and putting currency into my first character. But over this weekend now here, the second week in the league, I am starting to now transition over into my second character. And this is what I want to do. I want to follow what these 40 people are doing. And I want to see if this is a meme. I want to see if this is a joke. These 40 players are playing Pathfinders, and what they're doing is they are stacking increased item rarity. As we all know now, after the first week of the league, gold is tied to item rarity in drops. So if I've got a billion item rarity, well, hopefully that means more gold drops from a particular map. That means that if I've got more gold, I can interact more with King's March and I can interact more with Faustus over here on the currency exchange market. It means I can do larger quantities of trades. It means that I don't have to look for such narrow ratios in order to still make massive volumes, uh, a massive amount of volume of currency per flip or per trade. Because gold is the sink and gold is the choke point for this league. So, what we've got here is a list of 40 characters who are all using, uh, what is it called, Andivarius, right? But if you look up characters who are using just Divination Distillate, and then you go from there on Pathfinder, right, you're going to see there's overlap here. There's 40 characters who are really trying to min-max the heck out of their item quantity at the moment. Now, the number of characters, 40, runs from about, what is it, level 100 all the way down to level 12, 
right, is terms of the, the total number of, of characters that are showing here, but we're only going down to level 87. The things that you're going to see in common here, Greed's Embrace, chess piece, which gives a whole bunch of item rarity. Uh, Orises, or Orses, right, whole bunch of item rarity. You're going to have Divination Distillate, whole bunch of item rarity. You're going to double wear Andivarius, whole bunch of item rarity. You're going to wear rare, rare helmets that have a whole bunch of item rarity. You can see it right behind me. I'm starting to stack up on these items as well. You're going to see a string of Servitude that has a whole bunch of item rarity on it. So I want to show you what one of these characters looks like. This is Generate the Dream. You can look all this up on POB for yourself, on POE Ninja, and then you can import it into your POB if you want. These characters all look absolutely silly when you look at their stats, right? Their life totals are one because they're going CI, and many of them also have low ES totals because they don't care if they die. They're not playing these characters at this point for levels. Some of the lower level ones, you can see characters are still caring about getting XP. So if you want to play this in a format where you don't die um, and where you're still getting a little bit of XP, you can do that. But this is a way for you to generate currency for trading on the currency auction house in order to make more currency for your other characters. Right? So you need to generate gold. Gold is capped or gated or influenced by item rarity. You can stack item rarity and then you can go as fast as you can. And the reason why you want to do a Pathfinder is for all of the juice that you're going to get off of using your flasks. So when we come over and we look at Generate the Dream, you see he's running three gold flasks. He's also running an overflowing chalice. The interaction there is, of course, while you're using your overflowing chalice, you gain no charges during the effect of any overflowing chalice, but you get 81% increased charges gained by other flasks during this effect. So essentially, you, you're going to ping pong those back and forth. And then the divination distillate is going to give you 50% increased rarity of items found, along with your gold flasks that are also giving you a bunch of increased rarity of items found while the flask is still up. The jewels, it just seems like are filling out defensive items for jewels. But then it looks like this massive circular wheel that just looks like an absolute meme. It looks like an absolute meme. It looks like a joke. The keystones all look like a joke. The whole character looks like a joke, right? But what if it's not? What if you could go into low tier maps with, I don't know, how much item quantity? What if I told you 700, or I'm sorry, not item quantity, item rarity. What if I told you you went into a map, as this character does, with 739 <laughs> item rarity? And you hit a monster that's scheduled to drop gold. What happens? I don't know. I want to find out what it looks like on my screen, and then I want to show it and bring it to you to your screens. So I'm going to mess around and play with this. I've got my uh, my Ranger, my Pathfinder. It's getting set up. I've got to go through and complete some more labs. I've got to get some more levels. But then I'm going to take a look. I'm going to buy up all of this uh, very, <laughs> various silly gear, and I'm going to test it out. I'm going to probably do some map testing like what we used to do, run 100 maps with this, run 100 instances of that, run it with the different gear, and just see how much gold actually gets generated, if it's worth it, if it's just a waste of time. That's what I'm going to do. So that's our currency discussion at the moment, using the things that we know about Settlers of Kalgur to hopefully then build specialized characters to allow us to interact with the League in a very particular way that hopefully generates us a whole bunch of currency, or maybe it'll be a big flop. And we'll just all get a chance to laugh at a terrible character and I'll go back to playing my Necro and enjoying all the fun that is Holy Relic of Conviction over there. But anyway, that's the theory. That's the discussion. This is a second character, by the way. This is a character using the Wind Ripper setup. I did not calculate all the item quantity on this character, but it's similar-ish. Take a look at these Strings of Servitude. This one's 90%. I think this one's also 90 Yeah, it seems to be that 90 is like the top end. Strings of Servitude that roll increased rarity on them if they're in the 50s to 60s, they're worth chaos. If they're in the 70s, they're worth multiple divs. If they're in the 80s, uh, they're like five to six divs. If they're in the 90s, they're like seven or eight divs. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's just, it's very interesting. It's really interesting. Maybe this is all just a meme, but maybe this is another way to unlock massive amounts of potential for interacting with the currency auction house and for interacting with King's March. If you don't want to interact with the currency auction house, and you're like, no, I'm allergic to flipping. Well, and I don't, I don't know why you stuck around for us to discuss flipping, but you have stuck around long enough for, uh, long enough for us to say you, you throw all of that gold into your mappers and throw all that gold into your ships and reap all the rewards from there. Anyway, so those are my thoughts. Those are the plans. That's what I'm going to do. We're going to give it a shot, and I will keep you updated along the journey as my character dies. 
probably in the vicinity of 10,000 times. And hopefully, just maybe, we reap that amount of rewards in terms of gold and currency. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think this will be a fail, a flop, or just an out-of-this-world success? Drop me a comment down below. Hope your second weekend of the Settlers of Calgary League is going well. I'm having a blast, and I hope, as always, the ongoing Settlers of Calgary League is the league. A Mirror of Galandra drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again, and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.